Hey everyone, welcome to episode four of our cargo trailer conversion to tiny home. And in this episode, Brad's got his work cut out for him. Yeah, in this episode, I'm gonna show you putting the floor down behind me here and strapping the ceiling, getting ready for everything else. Everything else. <laughs> So in this video, we're going to be putting down the half inch subfloor. So let's get started. I'm going to be screwing it down with some three inch screws and basically just cutting the plywood with my track saw. This helps me speed up the process. Using a table saw typically uh, takes too long. Um, so yeah, we're just screwing these down. I'm going roughly six inches for my spacing right now in the video you're seeing me do it about 12 inches but i'll i'll go back later and screw this down a little bit more so pretty simple just get it all screwed down make sure there's no squeaks and uh no sort of hollow spots where the plywood wants to move up and down and then you're good to go i'm using a dewalt impact driver these are nice to use because they're not super hard on your wrist so you can always pick one of these up at your local store. We'll leave some links down below. Drills are nice too if you have one, but they do put a little bit more stress on your body. So that's why impacts are sort of a go-to driver for screwing. All right, so now what I'm doing is putting on some two inch straps on the ceiling here. And I got to put another piece in the middle if you're wondering why the gap is so big. What I'm using are some self-tapping screws and I'm using a magnetic 5 16 driver bit and basically just equally spacing them apart so that it'll be backing for our quarter inch or one eighth inch uh, sheathing that we're going to put on the ceiling here. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to run the strapping all the way through. So it's pretty easy. You just put your bit on. I've already marked my lines out in, in red and so I'm just lining them up. It just self taps. So now I'm just double checking. These don't need to be perfect. So that's 17 inches from there to there. So then I'm going to come down to this end and just measure the same. right here and then I'll just mark it and then I'll just screw this end in you just want to aim for the middle of the metal just like that so you can see I ran these long it doesn't really matter I'm gonna run my next piece right here, connect the two, and I might just put a block behind just to screw them together. That way I'm utilizing all my material, not having any waste. And this is just backing, it's not really a structural entity, so it's, it's gonna be fine to hold the, the plywood on there. So that's what I'm gonna do now. When I'm, as I'm doing this, I kinda of had a thought, if, if you're gonna do something similar, I think I would have done it a little differently. I think I would have strapped this ceiling out first and then I would have insulated because what I'm finding is I could have gained another, you know, three quarters of an inch, the thickness of this strapping plus a bit of this void. So what I'm gonna do, I don't really feel like spending $400 on spray foam. So I'm just gonna go buy some three quarter inch uh, styrofoam panels that have that silver backing and we'll show you later when I'm installing it but I'm going to cut those into strips and fit them in between all of these and that's just going to give me a little bit more R value I think they're I think they're like two or three I can't remember what the R value is but uh, that'll be later in the video so that's just a little tip just doing this myself because I'm just kind of winging it never built one of these before is Put your strapping up and then spray foam that way you're getting the maximum coverage i think it's just more or your money's better spent that way when i was originally doing this i did still have spray foam left over and i 
I gave the rest to a buddy, but you know, I, I could have easily filled this all this cavity and had I done it in the reverse order. So there's a little tip for you. Just learn from my mistakes. But uh, yeah, it should be good final product. We're pretty stoked. All right, let's do another strap. The other thing too is I'm finding when I'm putting this on, there's little low spots with the styrofoam that I'm having to sort of cut off. So it's just something to be aware of. And having the magnetic bit definitely helps. I actually did it. We're going to be doing a tool review on this. So, or maybe we already did when you see this video, it might already be up, but uh, the kit that this comes in. So this is just a 5 16 bit with a magnet in the end. Okay, makes it really, really easy. I mean, this is just an extension, just so I'm not, my drill isn't too close, so I've got nice room so I don't hurt myself. benefit to having this little bit of a void for me is I'm going to be putting in LEDs, little pot lights. So it's going to give me a cavity to run my wires because like I said, we're sort of doing this as we go. We have a rough idea of what we want being our first sort of live in trailer. You know, there's lots of trial and error and figuring out what we want to do. So, you know, having this void will allow me to easily run my wires. So that's a plus. Now, if you were really planning this out, you might tack your wires up first, but uh, I think I'll just fish tape all my wires in. So it'll be exactly where we want to have everything. And that'll be in a video coming too. All right, one more screw and this one's done. So then I'll just connect these two just with a little block in behind and a screw. Put a screw here and a screw here. Connect that together so it's nice and flush. And then I gotta put another piece right in here. And you can kind of see because this trailer is curved, it makes it a little bit harder to have, you know, to cover up these gaps. If it was square, I could run this all the way up and then my ceiling would come right in. Kind of like the front here this nose is curved and this is straight so I've got this this void I couldn't quite get my pieces in this isn't exactly a bad thing because I can use this area to run my wires and then I'm just gonna put a piece of molding in here and then I can always pop that molding off if I need to uh, in order to get to wires or run new wires or repair wires whatever it might be so keep that in mind when you're kind of planning to have some channels where you might be wanting to run sort of your wire highway, as we call it, and then it'll allow you to work and maintain on your trailer. So something to think about when you're doing uh, a trailer that has a bit of a curve to it. And most trailers that I've, you know, been in have this slight curve. I don't like the flat top trailers because it just holds snow and water. I really like having the curves so in the summertime or wintertime or whatever, it's running off and you're not getting a lot of buildup and weight on your roof. So if you are thinking about buying a trailer, I recommend getting something with a bit of a curve on the roof. You don't have to get a curved front, it's just they either have it or they don't or they have a point or, I mean there's a million options. So. A little off topic there, but uh, some trailer knowledge for you. And we'll keep sharing our trailer knowledge as we continue our journey from cargo trailer conversion to tiny home. Thanks so much for following along. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And if you enjoyed this video today, give it a like. We will see you next time right here on Hammer and Home.